everyone and welcome to the Art House. My name is Alicia and I'm going to be taking you through some fiber processing that I have been working on and will continue to work on. So if you are new to this channel, thank you so much for joining me. And if you're coming back, thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, I really appreciate all of you who have subscribed to the channel and who come back and watch the videos. So if you have not yet subscribed, uh, I really appreciate it. So <laughs> uh, I purchased some Shetland wool earlier this year. And I have been working on it. Processing fiber for me is a slow process. And I like that it's a slow process. It's a big, long project uh, that I can work on throughout the year. Let's be honest, it takes me months and months. And with the pandemic that is going on and having to work from home, it's not making that process <laughs> any easier. Uh, sitting down and recording these videos is more challenging when my husband and I are both working from home and needing a quiet space in order to talk to a camera without hearing someone else in the background talking to a camera. Yeah, so while being home is really nice, finding time to record is a little bit more challenging. But of all the things to be bogged down by, that's something I can do. So, you can see I'm being joined by my co-host today, Marjorie, our black Labrador, who has now turned four. She is four years old now. I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, she turned four a while ago. It is now currently August of 2020. She turned four in May. Anyway, it is August. I'm filming outside, like I said, finding a quiet space without bothering or interrupting things. So it's a chilly morning out here, so I'm wearing a sweater. It's technically summer, but it's in the low 50 degree range. Um, it is still fairly early. The sun is still coming up. I'm wearing my weekender sweater. Uh, so I'm going to take you through some of my fiber processing, what I've accomplished so far, and what I have going on next. So I purchased some Shetland wool from a local here in Tacoma, Washington. And this wool came in um, a trash bag that had been sitting outside in the rainy weather. Uh, we had very rainy weather this winter. I purchased this back in February of this year, 2020. Uh, so it had been sitting outside in a trash bag, which normally wouldn't be so bad, except it had been raining a lot. And so this was wet, dirty wool sitting in a bag outside. Um, so it was not the cleanest thing when I brought it home, which the price was phenomenally low. <laughs> the person was local. I did not have to pay for shipping. And, you know, I'm new to processing wool and I thought, whatever, it's, it's an experience and I'm going to get to try it. So I did wash the wool and I'm still picking stuff out of it uh, but it's very soft it's uh, light in color very white I would call it white um, there are some creamy bits but as I comb it it comes out white um, so there's still some uh, you can't see that there's still some grass. There's grass in here. Um, there are little seeds. Here's one. Little seeds from um, flowers or grass seeds. Um, little seeds in here. There's dog hair from Marjorie. So we've 
added to this. Um, little pieces of sticks. There's excrement in here. Um, just things like that. Uh, but a lot of it is coming out in the combing. So this has not been combed, um, hence it having these uh, dark, dirty tips here. Um, as I comb those out, dirt falls out um, still. But yeah, this wool was pretty brown <laughs> when I brought it home. Uh, and you can see after washing, it's, it's so much better. <laughs> um, but yes, I washed this wool, which took a few days, especially for drying. Um, I still have more of the Shetland upstairs in the craft room closet in a bag waiting to be washed more. Um, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, so I process the wool first with washing and drying and then using my hand combs to comb out the remaining dirt be able to pick out the seeds and twigs. Marjorie! Oh, good girl. Um, and get these beautiful little nests of fiber. So these are hand combs that my husband made for me, uh, just using scrap pieces of wood and nails that we had just laying around. Uh, so these hand combs cost me nothing, <laughs> which is amazing. So we just use, uh, like I said, a bunch of these nails we had lying around uh, and some scrap wood that he glued together for me so he could put the nails in there. And they just work great. Uh, I have, you can see, it's a double row of nails and we've staggered there we go, we've staggered them in the rows, and it just works really, really splendidly. Um, yeah, I love them. So let me just show you um, how I comb the wool and take you through that experience. So it's Saturday, and Marjorie and I are outside enjoying the mm, kind of sunny weather that we're having. Uh, I bought some Shetland wool over the weekend, and here it is piled up on our table outside. And as you can see, it's dirty. <laughs> I've got, there's some vegetable matter in here, some grass. There's definitely some uh, sheep excrement uh, and whatnot. Uh, and it came in two bags. This, this bag was a little bit cleaner um, than this group. This got a um, hose down here in the backyard. And I'll probably give it another hose down here in the backyard because it's still pretty, uh, pretty icky. I'm not going to touch it with my bare hands. But yeah, um, I wouldn't... I, I don't know that this is a high quality cut. Um, I think that's why it was so cheap. But uh, wool is wool, and I'm going to be processing this and spinning it up, and it should be super fun. And Marjorie is having fun roaming around the backyard. <laughs>
So I still have more wool to comb, as I've been showing you. <laughs> this is um, clean wool that still hasn't been combed yet. Uh, so I still have a nice sized box of that um, yet to go through. But I got to a good amount of wool where I'm ready to start playing with color. So the last spin that I did was with some Coopworth uh, wool and I spun a sweater's quantity and then some and knit a sweater out of it. <laughs> um, and that was my first, you know, beginning to end fiber preparation, spinning to knitting project. And it was amazing. So this time I'm trying out a different breed, uh, but I'm also wanting to play with color. So it was nice to practice spinning the natural wool where, you know, all the wool came from the same sheep. There were color variations, just natural color variations that were happening. Uh, but overall, I could just focus on my spinning technique. Uh, it wasn't about how the colors were blending together. It was all about the feel of the wool, the feel of the yarn. <laughs> so what I want to do with this Shetland wool is now I want to introduce color. And I want to play with color. I love the natural white color of this wool. But... I think it will also do really well with some dyed color added to it. So that's what I did. Uh, yesterday I dyed up the fiber. I split it into three equal parts and I dyed the primary colors. So I have red, blue, and yellow and I'm going to play around with fiber blending in order to get the other colors. Okay, so here's the idea. <laughs> I've got my three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. Oh my goodness, <laughs> so great. So some of this some of each color has been combed. So here's one of those nests that was combed. And so these are some of the longer fibers, if you will, that have been combed and aligned. Uh, while some of them are the leftover bits from combing that didn't uh, easily come out of the comb that were stuck in the tines, if you will. I actually don't know what those are called uh, on a comb. Uh, but I'm going to do a woolen prep using my hand carters. And so I don't care if they're long or short fibers. I really want to just use up all of this wool. So I have uh, a mixture of long and short fibers. And I have equal amounts in all of them. So I prepped up 55 grams of combing 55 times 3 and then whatever was left over um, from the non combed leftover from combing portions um, I took whatever was there divided it by 3 and split it up so that gave me 18 grams for each color so that gives me a total of 73 grams of each color uh, so I've done the math no surprise there. Um, I've done the math and my plan is to mix the primary colors to get the other main colors, orange, purple, and green. And when I do that, I will then have 36 grams of the six main colors. And then I'd like to blend even further. And I'd like to get the next level on the color wheel. And so when I do that blending, I should have 18 grams of each of the 12 colors. 
yeah. <laughs> so that's the plan. So I have my kitchen scale here. And uh, this is what I use to weigh my fiber and weigh my yarn. And I also sometimes use it in the kitchen, <laughs> which was its original purpose. Um, so I have this here to help me weigh out the colors. I also have some baskets, um, just some, they're plastic baskets. Um, I like the plastic because then the fiber doesn't stick to um, a wooden or wicker basket. Um, also, also, there's no cloth in here for it to stick to either. Um, these are just from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have some baskets to put the fiber in. Um, also help me with the weighing. I have my hand carters over here, which I did purchase from Howard Brush Company off of Etsy. They have um, pretty good prices on things. These were discounted because there's, they're not perfect. I'm not an expert enough to know what is wrong with them. <laughs> um, so they work, they work great for me. You can see I still have some leftover bits here from when I was um, carding some of my previous wool. So I need to clean these out really quickly before I start using them. Uh, but yeah, I have my hand cards here. And so what I'm going to do first is um, figure out how much of each color I need to use for the blending. And then how much I'm going to leave set aside for to remain red, yellow, and blue. Marjorie just grabbed uh, some of my clippings. I have to show you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Marjorie, bring that over here. Yeah, get it. Look at this. <laughs> you silly girl. I trimmed this uh, butterfly bush a few days ago and I'm letting the the twigs dry out because I'm going to use them for something but she has claimed that one. <laughs> okay, sorry. I just had to show you that. But yeah, so I'm going to measure out um, the portions for the first level of blending and then we'll get started with blending. So the sun has come out. <laughs> I have ditched the sweater because it's very warm in the sunlight. And I think I'll end up moving myself into the shade so that I don't get sunburned doing this. <laughs> uh, so I have split all of the fibers up into fourths, four equal parts. So this basket has 18 grams of each color, 18 grams of each color, 
you get the picture. Okay, so I have four baskets here. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is one of these baskets will get set aside. This is the, here's three of my colors right here. So I'm going to have 18 grams of each color in the end. So of the primary colors, I'll just set one of these aside. This is going to be saved for later. This basket I'll set aside. This will be for blending out into the 12 colors, the second round of six new colors. Uh, so I'll set this aside as well. And then these two baskets I'm going to use to make orange, purple, and green. <laughs> so um, I will need uh, 18 grams of each primary to make, is it a secondary? Are these called secondary colors? I did not take many art classes in college as a math major, um, but I'll need 18 grams of blue and 18 grams of red to make purple. I'll also need 18 grams of blue and 18 grams of yellow to make green. And then, <laughs> and then I also need 18 grams of yellow and 18 grams of red to make orange. And so I've got my <laughs> uh, stuff set up here. So that'll make 36 grams of orange, purple, and green. And then half of this will go to blend out to, to purple or blue green and yellow green etc so I'm I am going to blend this and then use half of it to blend again and then I'll get blended with the primary so yeah lots of pre-planning here uh, but yeah so we're going to set these two baskets aside for later and I'm going to be working with these to do the first round of blending <laughs> 